This man used to be a lonely office worker, but unexpectedly, he was reincarnated into a magical world with SS rank magic powers. Shin Wolford was an office worker in modern day Japan, a corporate slave whose life felt empty. Shin spent more time working overtime than hanging out with friends. One night, after a long overtime shift, Shin walked home while daydreaming, thinking about how dull his life was. He was so lost in thought that he didn't notice the truck coming toward him. The accident ended Shin's life and transported him to another world. Shin was reborn in a world full of magic and mystery, where there were heroes and also demons. His first memory was of a city in ruins, destroyed by a demon attack, and he was the only survivor. At that critical moment, a wizard named Merlin found him and adopted him as his grandson. Shin lived with Merlin in a small house hidden deep in the forest, learning about this new world. With knowledge from his previous life, Shin grew into an extraordinary child. His magical abilities developed rapidly, as did his swordsmanship. When he turned eight, Shin decided to hunt in the forest for their dinner. He hid in the bushes, using wind magic to easily take down several wild chickens and boars. Shin returned home with his catch, showing it to Merlin, who was impressed by his effective use of wind magic. Later, Merlin tested Shin's abilities by asking him to light some wood. Shin easily imagined the burning process, and the wood ignited without the need for a lengthy incantation. This made Shin secretly relieved, as he didn't have to shout out spells every time he used magic in this world. At that moment, Melinda Bowen, his enchantment teacher, and Michael Collins, his swordsmanship instructor, arrived at Merlin's house. Melinda, an animal rights activist, immediately scolded Shin for hunting wild boar. However, Shin explained that the hunting wasn't too dangerous for him, as he was equipped with magical gear and had been trained by Michael. Two years passed, and Merlin decided to take Shin on a demon hunt, believing Shin was ready to face stronger opponents. Merlin explained that demons were born from ordinary creatures who failed to control the magical energy within them, causing them to go mad. Although rare among humans, human-born demons had nearly destroyed their kingdom in the past, until they were finally defeated by Merlin, who earned the title of hero. Merlin then taught Shin a search spell, magic that allowed wizards to track the presence of magical creatures by spreading mana. Shin surprised Merlin by mastering the spell quickly and suddenly sensing an evil energy coming from a specific direction. They immediately headed toward the location and found a demon with a dark aura. Shin swiftly drew his sword, charging at the demon without hesitation. With quick movements thanks to his jet boots and a sword vibrating at an ultrasonic level, Shin defeated the demon in just a few seconds. Merlin could only stand there, shocked by Shin's speed and precision. When asked, Shin casually said he was just doing what he had been taught, without revealing his knowledge from his previous life. The next day, Shin continued his sword training with Michael, followed by magic training with Merlin. While in the mountains, Merlin revealed to Shin that he wasn't Merlin's biological grandson, and that Shin was found in the ruins after a demon attack. Although saddened, Shin was ready to accept this reality, and said that he considered Merlin, Michael, and Melinda as his family. On his 15th birthday, a grand party was held to celebrate Shin's coming of age. Many special guests were invited, including Uncle Dizium and his two bodyguards, Christina and Siegfried. During the party, everyone gave suggestions about Shin's future, like joining the Royal Knights or becoming a demon hunter. But to everyone's surprise, Shin admitted that he didn't even know how to use money, as Merlin had only taught him magic all this time. After the party, Merlin took Shin to perform a magic test in the wild. Using the gate spell, which allows someone to teleport by utilizing the principles of wormholes, Shin demonstrated his incredible magical abilities. Everyone was amazed, especially when Shin created a powerful blue flame. However, Merlin warned that the magic Shin was using was extremely dangerous and required strict control. After adding hydrogen, Shin compressed the massive fireball into a single point and shot it at a nearby hill. The resulting explosion resembled a mini nuclear bomb, enough to terrify everyone around him, especially Melinda. This demonstration led the group to conclude that such extraordinary power, like Shin's, was too risky to be left unchecked. Dizium then added that Shin had the potential to disrupt the balance between nations. As a result, every king would race to bring him to their side. Dizium suggested that Shin should enroll in a magic academy. However, Merlin seemed less enthusiastic about the idea, considering that by that point, Shin had become a national asset. Much to Shin's surprise, Dizium revealed that he was actually the king of the Earl Shide Kingdom, and Shin was the only one unaware of his status. Christina was a royal bodyguard, Siegfried was the royal wizard, and even Michael was a former commander of the royal knights. Shin was truly shocked to learn how high the social status of those around him was. Dizium then shared a story about how he knew Merlin. Dizium was still a student when the demon nation attacked his country, and just as Dizium was about to be killed, Merlin and Melinda appeared and managed to defeat the demon with their magical powers. Shin found it hard to believe that they were once part of the same team, especially upon learning that Merlin and Melinda were actually husband and wife. 
Dizian then reassured Shin that if he joined the Magic Academy, he would learn a lot about how the world works and make new friends. Shin was also told that the Academy followed a strict meritocracy, without any influence or privileges for nobles. After much consideration, Merlin finally agreed to let Shin join the Magic Academy. A few days later, Shin, along with Merlin and Melinda, set out for the capital to attend the entrance exam. When they arrived at the capital checkpoint, the guards were shocked to see Merlin's identity as the sage, and Melinda, the teacher. News of their arrival quickly spread throughout the city, so they immediately headed to their large mansion where they were greeted by servants and the butler. Shin decided to go to the market and have fun exploring the city, but he ended up getting lost in an alley. Suddenly, Shin heard the screams of a girl being harassed by three adventurers. Disgusted by their actions, Shin stepped in. One of the adventurers tried to hit him, but the move was too slow, and Shin easily dodged it. In an instant, Shin swiftly defeated all the adventurers. After the incident, the girl Shin saved asked if he was hurt, but Shin assured her that he was fine. The girl's friend came over and thanked Shin, and at that moment, one of them instantly fell in love with Shin. At a cafe, the girls introduced themselves as Maria and Sicily. They shared that they were also going to take the entrance exam for the Magic Academy, just like Shin, and from that moment on, the three became friends. Maria, a big fan of the heroes, started rambling about Melinda and how her son would be joining the Academy. Feeling awkward and not wanting to reveal his true identity, Shin decided to pay for their drinks and leave. On the day of the exam, Shin was trying to find his way around the announcement board when a rude noble tried to grab his shoulder. Shin quickly twisted the boy's hand as a defensive move, but the noble, Kart von Ritzberg, felt insulted and started threatening Shin using his family's influence. Fortunately, the crown prince, August, appeared and firmly reminded Kart of the law prohibiting the use of noble status for privileges in the academy. Kart eventually left, not wanting to escalate things with the royal family. Shin was surprised to learn that August was the son of King Dizium. Since he considered Dizium his uncle, Shin jokingly called August his cousin, which made August laugh. Luckily, August didn't seem offended by the nickname. They all then took the written exam in the hall, followed by the practical exam. Shin, who was initially excited to see the other mages perform their magic, was soon shocked when one participant could only produce a small fireball. While everyone seemed impressed, Shin felt embarrassed. The following candidates weren't any better, leaving Shin disappointed. When it was his turn, the instructor warned him to hold back his power, as Shin had already received a message from the king. Despite trying to minimize his strength as much as possible, Shin still ended up destroying part of the room. After the exam concluded, the results were announced, and both Shin and August passed. They then went to pick up their uniforms, where the receptionist revealed that their uniforms had been equipped with defensive magic. The receptionist also warned them not to try enchanting the uniforms themselves. Casually, Shin asked if Melinda could help him, and the receptionist agreed. The receptionist also mentioned that Shin achieved the highest score in the entrance exam, and would need to give a speech at the new student reception ceremony. However, Shin quickly tried to pass the responsibility to August. Unfortunately, this time August wouldn't budge and reminded Shin that as the top scorer, it was his duty to give the speech. One night, Shin decided to cast the protective spell on his school uniform using a special magic pen. Not only that, but he also created a spell that could be used for auto-healing and converting magic into kinetic energy. Shin was so pleased with his work that he unintentionally shouted in excitement, which caught Melinda's attention. Surprised by Shin's ability, Melinda eventually made Shin promise not to tell anyone that he had enchanted his own uniform. At the new student reception ceremony, Shin's name was called to give the speech. The girls there finally realized who Shin really was, the son of a hero they had been talking about all this time. Calmly, Shin delivered his speech, while on the other hand, Kart seemed filled with rage and hatred. After the ceremony, Shin, August, and two other beautiful girls were placed in the S-rank class. Not long after class ended, Sicily, one of the girls in Shin's class, shared that she was being targeted by a man from a higher-ranking family. Shin grew concerned when he found out the man was Kart. Kart then appeared and tried to force Sicily, but Shin immediately stopped him. Kart revealed that they were engaged, but Sicily refused the engagement and trembled in fear. Seeing this, Shin promised to protect her. The situation escalated when Kart threatened to involve his father to punish Sicily for her defiance, but August quickly stepped in, threatening to report Kart to the king. Kart eventually left after hearing the threat, but August didn't miss the opportunity to tease Shin for showing off his power in front of a pretty girl like Sicily. Shin then decided to walk them home, worried that Kart might try something again. Maria quickly agreed, seeing it as a chance to get closer to Shin. 
August also decided to join, accompanied by his guards, Julius and Thor. When they arrived home, Shin introduced his friends to his grandparents, and explained Sicily's situation. Shin then asked for permission to enchant Sicily's uniform to protect her. However, Melinda asked Sicily if she was worthy of receiving such a big commitment. Melinda explained that once Shin enchanted her uniform, it would become a national treasure of unimaginable value. Sicily felt guilty and began to cry, revealing that she felt like she was taking advantage of Shin's kindness. Even so, Shin supported her honesty and proceeded to enchant her uniform. The king also ordered that no one should reveal the enchantment Shin placed on it, fearing the military might take interest in it. Shin then enchanted everyone's uniforms except Maria's, who declined because she didn't want the burden of owning a national treasure. The next day, Shin used magic to ensure Sicily's safety on their way to school, making Sicily blush. However, their sweet interaction made Maria feel uncomfortable. At school, a yellow-haired girl named Alice Corner suddenly arrived late to class. Cheerfully, Alice explained that she was so excited she couldn't sleep all night, leaving Shin wondering why. In this world, 15-year-olds are already considered adults. Their teacher then took them on a tour of the school, introducing various clubs like magic, potion making, and bodybuilding. Julius looked very interested in the bodybuilding club, but knowing his tight security, he couldn't join. However, August allowed it as a chance to be free from his guards. When it was time for Shin to choose a club, he wasn't sure which one to join. August suggested that Shin start his own club, and their teacher supported the idea. Everyone in the class was excited about the initiative, but Thor suddenly raised an important question, what was the purpose of the club? After discussing, they decided to study advanced magic under Shin's guidance, and named the club. Ultimate Magic Study Group The next day, the group heard that Cart had been punished for his actions. When Shin asked why Cart had been acting so aggressively, they explained that Cart wasn't always like that. He only started changing after frequently visiting the laboratory of Oliver Strom, a magic teacher with the ability to recognize talent. However, only Cart was close to him, as others found Oliver suspicious. When Shin sensed the presence of dark magic near the cafeteria, he immediately realized that Cart was approaching them, and instantly launched a fire spell. The barrier Shin created could barely withstand the attack. Shin quickly ordered everyone to activate the protective magic on their uniforms. Despite his hands being burned from the intense heat, his automatic healing helped reduce the pain. Cart continued to transform into a demon, spreading a negative aura. Shin asked August to take the others to safety while Shin held off Cart. Although August was initially upset, feeling underestimated, he eventually agreed and led the others away. Shin then faced Cart, who had fully turned into a demon, using blue flames to fight him. After an intense battle, Shin realized that Cart was beginning to self-destruct due to the overwhelming magic power. Realizing a huge explosion was imminent, Shin used an ultrasonic sword and managed to defeat him. Despite his victory, Shin felt devastated because he had just killed someone. His friends arrived and were stunned by Shin's victory. Meanwhile, Oliver, who was responsible for Cart's transformation into a demon, now set his sights on Shin. August concluded that Cart's transformation didn't make sense, and it was likely that Cart had been used as a human experiment. That afternoon, they arrived home to find the king and his aide already waiting for Shin. Unexpectedly, Shin was awarded his first achievement medal for preventing the crisis. Shin was shocked, but Merlin, understanding the situation, confronted Dizium. Dizium explained that the news had already spread across the nation, and the public wouldn't accept it if the award wasn't given. Merlin agreed, even though he had previously promised to keep Shin out of politics. The next day, Shin's name was the talk of the entire city. This made walking around town more awkward, especially with all the attention from the girls. However, Sicily's presence at his side made people assume that Shin was already taken. At school, all the students rushed to join Shin's club, causing the teacher to worry about setting a limit on the number of members. Eventually, it was decided that the requirement for joining would be the ability to use dimensional storage, and only two students passed, Mark Bean, the son of a blacksmith, and Olivia Stone, his childhood friend whose family owned a restaurant. Interestingly, it turned out that Alice and her female friends were big fans of Olivia's family restaurant, so Olivia promised to reserve a special table for them. Meanwhile, Shin also expressed interest in having a special weapon, but Mark said he could currently only make simple knives. Shin had to wait, although Mark suggested that a demon slaying sword could be a temporary solution. However, Shin had another idea. Shin explained that he used a regular sword imbued with magic to vibrate at ultrasonic speeds. Although effective, the sword was prone to breaking due to its thinness. So, Shin wanted to make some adjustments. Yuri, a classmate who was also a magician, praised Shin's extraordinary talent, though she felt that Shin often pushed his limits. Yuri offered to introduce Shin to Melinda, and without much hesitation, Shin accepted the offer. Meanwhile, Oliver, the main suspect, was brought in for interrogation by the Knight's Order. However, suspicions continued to rise, and when Oliver couldn't prove his innocence, 
His evil nature was exposed. Oliver admitted to conducting human experiments all along and was ready to flee once all his plans were uncovered. The group then discovered the location of Babel, with Oliver at the center of all the evil. When Oliver began insulting Cart, Shin immediately attacked with his flame-infused sword. Though the attack was blocked and Shin's rapid follow-up strikes failed, Shin eventually used earth magic to corner Oliver in midair. However, Oliver managed to escape using levitation magic. Shin didn't give up. With his gear, Shin launched an aerial assault on Oliver, following up with scorching flames. Oliver tried to counter with waves of energy, but his glasses shattered, revealing that he was a demon with perfect control over his rational mind. Proudly, Oliver declared that he had reached a peak where humans were mere playthings to him. Hearing this, Shin impulsively launched an attack that seemed to miss. However, Shin was actually preparing a destructive spell by focusing sunlight, which ultimately blew Oliver apart. After the huge explosion, Shin found that the surrounding area had turned to glass due to the extreme heat. However, Shin still doubted whether Oliver was truly dead. The next day, Shin shared his suspicions with August, who agreed. August then decided that the kingdom would cover all the costs of the equipment Shin needed to face the next threat. They immediately went to the blacksmith workshop owned by Mark's family. When August introduced himself, Mark's father and all the workers immediately knelt. After learning that Shin was the grandson of the great sage, they were even more impressed. Shin then informed them of his weapon request, and they immediately began the production process. On the other hand, the girls were busy chatting with Olivia, which left her exhausted. Shin then asked if the shop sold other items. Mark informed him that the second floor sold household items, while the third floor sold accessories. Shin quickly asked Cicely if she was interested in buying any accessories. Cicely misunderstood, thinking Shin wanted to buy her a ring, but what Shin actually meant was a defense-enchanted accessory to protect her. Cicely was disappointed, but she eventually chose an expensive ring. Shin placed the ring on her middle finger and said it would keep her safe. A few days later, Shin prepared to attend the award ceremony. When he arrived at the royal palace, Shin was introduced to the nobles, who greeted him with applause. The king then presented him with a medal as a reward. After that, the king made an important announcement, stating that Shin was not to be used for military or political purposes. As a consequence of violating this agreement, Merlin and his family would leave the country. The next day, Shin caused a stir at school with his sudden appearance through gate magic. Shin explained that he had to escape the crowd of fans gathering at his house. When Rin was curious about how his gate magic worked, Shin explained that the concept was about reducing the distance between two locations, not regular teleportation. Of course, Rin didn't quite understand, but she still cheered him on by mentioning that even Merlin couldn't grasp the concept. Shin then suggested that their group should improve their magical abilities, as the capital was becoming a less safe place. They first needed to determine the amount of magic each of them had. Shin started by checking Maria's magic barrier, which turned out to be quite thin. Then, Cicely tried creating a barrier using the magic accessories Shin had given her, and the result was a much stronger and thicker barrier thanks to her precise magic control. To demonstrate his power, Shin showcased how much magic control he had, but the pressure he generated was so strong that it almost suffocated his friends. Shin explained that they needed to reach this level of control if they wanted to fight against demons. After that, Shin invited his friends to his house. They were all excited to meet Shin's grandfather, Merlin, the legendary wizard, Shin explained that there was another crowd outside the school gates, and Merlin laughed, calling it the price of being a celebrity. The students asked if it was Merlin who had taught Shin the strange magic he used, but Merlin explained that he had only taught the basics, while Shin had found his own way to develop magic. Merlin talked about how most wizards focus on visualizing the outcome of their spells, but Shin focused on the process. Merlin asked if the students knew how fire burns, and when they didn't, Merlin laughed and admitted that even he didn't fully understand. But Shin had always been curious about such deep questions, which made him excel even more in magic. Suddenly, Merlin used gate magic, which surprised Shin. Merlin explained that it was difficult for him at first, but after learning the principles, he managed to master the spell. Merlin emphasized that anyone could perform magic like this as long as they understood the principles well and could accurately visualize the process. Hearing that, the students started to feel more confident. Rin, eager to practice, came to school the next day with her body covered in bruises and her hair singed. When Shin asked what happened, Rin explained that she had been practicing magic control, but her magic got out of control and caused a small explosion. Shin was worried, but Rin just laughed and said this was normal for her, given that her father was a royal court wizard. Not long after, Shin and his friends went to Mark Smithy's workshop, where the first prototype of Shin's special sword was ready. The sword had a special mechanism where, by pulling a trigger, the blade would detach and could be replaced with a new one. Tony, who first suggested this idea to Shin, was very impressed with the result, as was August. 
August asked if Shin would mind if their army used swords with replaceable blades like that. August explained that it would greatly help keep the military budget low and enhance the army's strength, which was crucial given the increasing likelihood of war with the Blustia Empire. Upon hearing the possibility of war, the students began to worry that they too might be drafted. However, August reassured them not to worry, as the country had promised not to involve Shin in the war. Even so, Shin said that although he wouldn't be recruited, he wouldn't stand by if his friends were in danger. If that happened, Shin would fight to protect them. Meanwhile, Oliver managed to survive and successfully carried out his evil plan. He used his henchmen to manipulate the Blustia Empire into engaging in a war against the Kingdom of Earlshide, under the pretense that they were facing a threat from demons. When the Imperial forces attacked the Kingdom of Earlshide, they didn't expect their enemy to be fully prepared. As a result, the Blustia army suffered a crushing defeat. Shortly after the loss, the Emperor received news that demons had been sighted in his capital. The Emperor immediately withdrew his troops and rushed back to the capital. However, upon his arrival, the city had already fallen under the control of demons led by Oliver. When the Emperor entered the throne room, he found Oliver waiting for him there. Oliver coldly stated his intent to kill the Emperor personally. Before the Emperor could call for help, Oliver used magic to bind him and then obliterated him without a trace. Meanwhile, Lord Gaster and Rupert arrived in the capital, hoping to defeat the Emperor once and for all. However, instead of the Emperor, they encountered Oliver and his demon army. Realizing the extreme danger, they retreated and reported the situation to the King. Upon learning of the far greater threat beyond mere war, the Kingdom of Earlshide went on full alert. Even schools began to focus on improving the combat skills of their students. A joint training exercise with the Knight Order was announced, which immediately cast a gloomy atmosphere over the class. The relationship between knights and mages had never been good. Knights often called mages weaklings, while mages referred to knights as muscleheads who relied solely on physical strength. Shin tried to explain the importance of complementing each other, but instead, he was laughed at because they thought Shin fit into both categories. When Shin revealed that he had been trained by Michael, the legendary figure regarded as a sword saint, everyone was shocked. Nevertheless, Shin still failed to convince them to work harmoniously with the knights. During the joint training, they were assigned to exterminate demons in the forest. Everyone gathered outside the city gates, and Shin was on a team with August, Sicily, and Maria. During the journey, some of the knights spoke condescendingly about Shin, believing his status as a hero was just a rumor that would slow them down. Shin then asked if they had ever fought demons before, but his question was taken as an insult. Shin warned them that failing to cooperate could result in death. However, the knights remained arrogant about their abilities. When August stepped in, they pretended to agree to work together, although their intentions were insincere. Upon arriving at the location, they were greeted by their superiors, Christina and Siegfried. Although Shin tried to avoid any conflict, the situation became more complicated. The female knights were suddenly smitten by Siegfried, while the male knights were captivated by Christina. Shin was surprised to see how popular they were, but August explained that both were highly respected because their strength was great enough to protect the king. August then informed the supervisor about their plan to let the knights fight first, so they could realize their limitations. Even though Shin assured them that there were no demons nearby, the knights remained on guard. When a demon appeared, Siegfried immediately ordered them to prepare for battle. A demonic boar charged in, but all Shin could think about was how delicious that boar would be if it weren't possessed. The knights tried to hold their ground, but the demon was too fast and strong. Their formation crumbled in an instant. At the critical moment, Shin stepped in and decapitated the boar with a single slash. Christina didn't waste the opportunity to scold them, emphasizing how weak they were. After the battle, Sicily healed their wounds, and they finally agreed to cooperate. However, the knight's excessive attention to Sicily made both Shin and the female knights feel a bit uncomfortable. Soon after, the knights reported that over a hundred demons were approaching them. Shin volunteered to handle them alone. He quickly prepared a large spell that destroyed the forest along with all the demons in front of him. His incredible feat left everyone in awe. The women who had belittled him earlier now apologized. Some knights even assumed Sicily and Shin were a couple, making both of them blush. After that, the team worked much better together. They encountered a demon bear, with the knights forming the front line while the mages attacked with fireballs. Thanks to their improved teamwork, they managed to defeat the demon. Christina and Siegfried were impressed by their growing collaboration. Siegfried then asked Shin about the strength of his friends, which seemed almost on par with the royal mages. Shin explained that they had formed a study group to train their magic together. Hearing this, Siegfried became interested and wanted to study under Shin's guidance. 
However, August stopped him, saying that Shin's magic was too powerful and dangerous if misused. August lectured Shin on the importance of keeping his magic secrets safe. Despite this, Siegfried insisted on learning the basics. With August's permission, he started practicing magic control every day. Siegfried witnessed how much progress Maria and Sicily were making. While they were still far below Shin's level, they had advanced significantly. Siegfried was impressed and promised to continue his magic training. Meanwhile, Miranda wondered how her friends were progressing in their study group. In a quiet corner of the forest, Mark, Olivia, Tony, and Julius, along with a few other knights, were resting after a long journey. One knight kept glaring at Tony with hatred. It turned out they had been good friends back in high school, but their friendship ended when Tony decided to leave them and join the Mage Academy. The situation grew awkward, but before they had a chance to talk, a large demonic wolf suddenly lunged out of the bushes, attacking them without warning. The knight who harbored resentment toward Tony immediately charged forward, bravely confronting the demon. Although their supervisor had warned them about the dangers of facing demons alone, the other knights couldn't just stand by and also move to fight. However, the situation quickly worsened when more demonic wolves appeared from all directions surrounding them. The knights began to struggle, but Tony and the other mages quickly stepped in, using long-range magic to take down the demons one by one. After the battle was over, the supervisor stood in shock, looking at the destruction left behind. Tony approached his former friend, who still harbored anger but remained cold toward him. Tony's friends were curious and asked if there was another reason behind the hostility. Tony paused for a moment, then recalled something that might have caused the rift. Apparently, the knight had liked a girl in the past, but the girl had fallen for Tony instead, even though their relationship didn't last long. This seemed to have made his former friend even more upset. Elsewhere in the forest, Rin, Alice, Yuri, and Thor encountered a group of knights who tried to flirt with them using misogynistic comments. The knights underestimated them, but when a pack of demonic dogs attacked, the knights showed just how weak they were. The girls, fed up, retaliated with their powerful magic, wiping out the demons in an instant. However, Rin's magic suddenly went out of control and exploded, causing damage not only to the enemies but also to their own group. When everyone finally regrouped at the city gate, Shin noticed that Rin's group looked disheveled, with frizzy hair and tattered clothes from the explosion. On the other hand, Shin also noticed that there was still unresolved tension between Tony and his former friend. Meanwhile, Maria joked that throughout the mission, Shin and Cicely kept flirting with each other. This made both of them blush. But Maria quickly got serious again, saying that with Shin's support, their training had been going very well. August, who was the leader, informed everyone that after graduation, they would be placed under national supervision. They might even form a special unit directly under August's command. Shin felt guilty for accidentally changing his friends' lives, but they were actually excited because they had secured elite jobs even before graduating. Everyone begged Shin to train them harder, realizing that they needed to become stronger to face the increasing threats. A few days later, Shin took the girls to the Barren Mountains for magic training. Their training session was so impressive that August compared it to a national-level military drill. Shin explained that he chose this location because it was very remote, ensuring that no one would disturb them. After an exhausting training session, August delivered the news that demons were wreaking havoc in the Blasphia Empire. Cities and villages were being destroyed, with both nobles and commoners being slaughtered without discrimination. Even though they were aware of this, the Earlshide Kingdom couldn't start a war without proper preparation. The most concerning thing was the growing number of demons, making the situation more urgent. Shin suspected that Oliver was behind all the chaos. He realized that to face this threat, they needed to hold an intensive training camp. They agreed to train in the mountains but also wanted to find a more comfortable place to stay. Maria suggested Sicily's family home, which had hot springs, and everyone liked the idea. After talking to his grandparents, Shin arranged for everyone to train there. However, Shin's grandmother, Melinda, was worried about the young people staying together without supervision. She eventually offered to be their chaperone, and Shin's grandfather, Merlin, decided to join as well. The next morning, the group set off in carriages pulled by horses equipped with magical air conditioning. Shin had no idea that such magical equipment existed and was impressed to learn that Melinda had created it. Along the way, they sensed the presence of demons around them. After a quick investigation, they found a group of merchants surrounded by wolf monsters. To decide who would take on the wolves, they drew lots. Rin got the first turn and defeated the entire pack with a single powerful wind spell. Shin then advised Rin to control her magic better so she could release her spells faster. Upon arriving at the hot spring town of Claude, they were warmly welcomed by Sicily's family. They were treated exceptionally well, and the servants even regarded Shin as a potential son-in-law. After enjoying the hot springs, 
Merlin thanks Shin's friends for being such good companions, remembering that Shin never had friends his age before coming to the academy. Shin's friends were happy to know him, and they all agreed that Shin had made a huge impact on their lives. The next morning, everyone began magic training under Merlin's guidance. Merlin gave tips tailored to each person's abilities, and as usual, Rin unleashed too much magic causing it to spiral out of control. This time, Merlin quickly told her to stop and shielded everyone from the explosion. Afterward, Melinda gave the students a brief lesson on magical equipment and the proper way to chant spells. Later, Shin took them to the mountains for practical training. Melinda felt that they were strong enough to face the magic department's commission, but Shin and Merlin thought otherwise. They believed there was still much to improve, especially when it came to fighting demon forces with magic. Shin knew that everyone, including himself, needed to become stronger. The others didn't take Shin's words lightly and immediately set up magical barriers, ready to protect themselves from the shockwave of Shin's new spell. Shin first imagined a highly flammable gas to create a massive blue fireball. Then, he combined it into a giant fireball surrounded by a tornado, directing it forward. Normally, Shin used this attack to devastate large areas, but this time, he planned to control it with precision. The attack was released with measured power, destroying everything in its path. Although Shin was proud that his new technique worked, Melinda smacked him with a fan while scolding him. Melinda asked why Shin needed an attack strong enough to destroy three hills at once. Nervously, Shin explained that he didn't expect it to be that powerful, but Melinda wasn't satisfied with his answer. The other students were also frightened by Shin's strength, and no one believed him when he said it wasn't a big deal. After the training ended, class was dismissed. As everyone headed home, August asked Shin to use the gate spell to take him to the palace so he could get an update on the war situation. Shin agreed, and they arrived at the palace, where a blonde girl with a sour expression was already waiting for August. August grew nervous when he saw the girl, then introduced her as his friend, Elizabeth. Elizabeth politely greeted Shin, but then immediately scolded August for leaving her alone. Shortly after, August's younger sister, May, also arrived. May agreed with Elizabeth and scolded August for going off without them. She also confessed she was jealous that August got to camp with Melinda, who was her idol. August tried to tease her, but May just got more annoyed. However, when she noticed Shin, May seemed a bit confused. She introduced herself as a huge fan of Melinda, and Shin found that pretty amusing. August asked the two girls why they were there, and they said they were coming along to the training camp. August refused, saying it was too dangerous, but he was quickly proven wrong when his father instructed him to take Elizabeth and May to the camp. August resigned himself to the situation, while Shin just chuckled, already imagining how much fun it would be to tease him later. Shin used the gate spell to take them to the hot spring town, and May was ecstatic to see them arrive in a new town in just seconds. August scolded her for getting too carried away, but Shin simply smiled and held out his hand. May accepted his hand, while August warned her to listen to everything Shin said and not stray too far from him. August then turned to Elizabeth, telling her that the training camp wouldn't be a comfortable place, but Elizabeth didn't care. She said her main goal was just to ensure nothing disrupted her life. Shin thought Elizabeth was jealous of the girls at the camp, but Elizabeth responded that her worries were actually about Shin. Every time August came home, he only talked about Shin, which made Elizabeth a bit concerned. Shin found it amusing but also a little gross to imagine Elizabeth thinking there was something between him and August. However, August wisely explained that Shin was a good friend he could rely on, and since that was something new for him, he sometimes got overly excited. Elizabeth was touched by August's words and decided not to stay angry anymore. They then headed to a restaurant to eat, where August told Elizabeth that Shin already had a girlfriend, which made him nervous. August urged him to stop being a coward and confess his feelings to Sicily, as everyone knew they liked each other. Shin still hesitated, wondering what would happen if he was wrong and things between him and Sicily were ruined. August then asked if Shin was happy with the way things were now, and if not, he should be brave and take the first step instead of waiting for Sicily to confess her feelings first. Shin felt increasingly conflicted, even after they returned home. Meanwhile, Elizabeth and May told Sicily that Shin hadn't stopped talking about her during the entire trip. Sicily blushed, and Shin tried his best to make the two girls stop. After that, Elizabeth and May greeted the elderly couple. May started feeling nervous when she saw Melinda in person, and Shin mentioned that she was a big fan of hers. Melinda approached May alone and casually complimented her, saying she looked pretty cute. Melinda then joked, wishing Shin had been that sweet as a child, but unfortunately, he was just a troublemaker who couldn't be left alone. Everyone laughed in agreement with the joke, hoping their own kids wouldn't turn out like Shin when he was younger. Shin could only smile weakly at the joke, but the mood shifted when Cicely bravely said that she disagreed. Cicely believed their future children would be amazing. Realizing what she had just said, Cicely immediately blushed, causing everyone around her to tease her for thinking that far ahead. 
Embarrassed and flustered, Cicely chose to escape from her friend's teasing. August, seeing all this, quickly approached Shin and said that it was more than obvious that Cicely really liked him. Shin could only stand there, realizing that August might be right. That night, Shin went out for a walk and found Cicely sitting alone. Shin approached her, but neither of them knew what to say. After a few moments of awkward silence, Cicely finally apologized for what she had said earlier. Shin smiled slightly and admitted that, honestly, he was happy to hear it. They then started talking about their first meeting, and Shin confessed that from the moment he first saw Cicely, it felt like his heart had been struck by lightning. Cicely blushed, and she too admitted that she thought Shin was very handsome. Hearing that confession, Shin felt brave enough to confess his love to Cicely. Tears of joy immediately flowed from Cicely as she heard those words, and she responded by saying she loved Shin too. Without hesitation, Shin asked her to be his girlfriend, and Cicely happily agreed. They drew closer to each other. However, the sweet moment was interrupted when their friends, who had been peeking from afar, emerged from their hiding spots. They quickly teased the new couple, ruining their first romantic moment. Not only their friends but even Shin's grandparents were there, witnessing their grandson finally becoming a true man. Shin proudly announced that he and Cicely were officially dating. Of course, the happy moment was also attended by Cicely's manager, who suddenly appeared from the bushes to congratulate them. August also offered his congratulations to Shin but jokingly reminded him not to get too swept up in romance and forget about their training. The next day, everyone gathered at the beach, but Shin reminded them that they weren't there to have fun but to train. Their training, of course, started with an intense beach volleyball game. Alice quickly spiked the ball high into the air, using her magic-enhanced physical strength. The game was fierce, with magic being used, making the beach volleyball feel like a mini battlefield. In the middle of the excitement, a stray fireball almost hit Elizabeth and May. Fortunately, Merlin quickly blocked it with his magic barrier. Melinda immediately scolded the fireball culprit, but Merlin suggested they continue the game as a way to practice controlling their magic. After a day of playing, they gathered at the mansion that night. The conversation shifted to the past, to when they all met at August and Elizabeth's fifth birthday party. Shin, suddenly remembering something, asked everyone to be quiet. However, the serious moment was quickly interrupted by Melinda, who burst into the room, ordering them to go to bed early since training would resume the next day. But when the lights were turned off, everyone hid in their beds, hoping to avoid the early bedtime order. Somehow, Shin and Cicely ended up in the same bed, creating an awkward situation. Before anything could happen, Melinda came back in and caught them, scolding everyone thoroughly. 